Welcome back to the course. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can take this AI agent workflow that we created in the previous video and add it into real working applications such as React.js or Django. So in this particular tutorial, we will cover both and then we will customize some settings. So this chatbot that you are going to see will look very nice and behave the way you want. And then we will add some additional conditions to our workflow to handle different cases. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so first of all, let's take a look at how we can add this workflow to Django. And the same logic will apply adding it to HTML pages, to probably PHP apps and so on. So what I'm going to do is to head over to the right top corner and I'm going to click on this code button. Then I'm going to go to embed, pop up HTML, and I'm going to copy this script. Next, let's go to the code repo. And over here, I have a base HTML file opened. I have a block title, which is basically irrelevant for this particular example. Then I have block content and block scripts. And we want to look into the block script specifically for this example. So next, I'm going to head over to the views.py file. Over here, I have a very simple home view with the main HTML. So this is a reference to the main HTML file over here in the templates. So let's open the main HTML. And here I have a uh, block title as home, and then I have hello world in the block content. And in the block script, I'm going to paste the script, save the main HTML. I have my development server running already, so we can jump into the browser and simply refresh the page. And now, as you can see, we have this chatbot working. So as the next step, what we will need to do is to customize it. But before we actually do this, let's take a look at how to add this to a React page. So this is a React application over here. And then let's go back to Flowwise. And this time, let's head over to Embed and select Pop-up React. So here we will have to get the Flowwise embedded React in order to import the bubble chat. So if you type in Flowwise embedded React in Google, you should be able to find this um, GitHub repo. And we need to go to the installation section, copy the comments, and then in the terminal, I'm going to paste it. I've already installed this. Um, but yeah, you may basically get some errors that are related to Flowwise Embedded React. So what I'm going to do is to simply copy this and then run this one more time with npm install Flowwise Embedded React. And then I'm going to use the flag legacy peer tabs. And this should solve the problem. Okay. And then I'm going to run the development server, uh, npm run dev. There we go. So now in Flowwise, again, we can copy this code and this time go to React. I'm going to paste the code somewhere over here and then I'm just going to organize it. And I'm going to put in the bubble chat somewhere over here. So I'm going to save the app JSX, go to the React app, and over here we have this chatbot as well. Okay, so now I'm going to customize the React application, but the same logic will apply for the Django app. So I'm going to focus on the app JSX. Going back to Flowwise, what we need to do is to select this option, show embedded chat config, and I'm going to simply select the bubble chat 
area. So as you can see over here, we have much more options that we can simply customize. So let me copy everything for the bubble chat. And then I'm going to replace this very simple bubble chat that we got previously. Okay, so I think over here one curly bracelet is missing and now everything should be fine. Um, so yeah, let's save this and yeah, let's take a look at the result. So first of all, we see a disclaimer which we can very easily turn off or customize. I'm just going to press start chatting and right now we see this chatbot and we see a different icon over here and this icon is over here as well uh, we, we see some starter options and yeah let's play around with this so what i'm going to do first maybe is to comment out this custom icon source in the bottom so right now we have this normal nice looking icon um, next, what we can do is to get rid of the disclaimer. So um, if we reload the page, we don't see the disclaimer anymore. What else? Um, of course, we can play around with the colors, but I want to skip this and leave the colors as they are. But we can change the starter prompts. So here we can place in Spanish, Spanish, we can put in Polish, we can put in, for example, English as well. Okay. So now we have those options visible over here. So let's also change this welcome message. So this welcome message is available in the chat window. And if we find the welcome message, we can simply delete the current one and add our own. So what I'm going to write is um, upload the fi JSX file that you want me to translate as well as um mention the chosen translation language so let's save this and i'm going to refresh it and as you can see right now the welcome message is different so in flow wise i don't think we have this option to customize this welcome message however if we are adding the workflow the chatbot the uh, solution to um, existing application we have this option to customize this message so let's do a few more customizations before we run this bot and see if it's working um, let's remove this icon let's change this title and let's also I remove this folder over here. So going back to the code, let's find our chat window. So here we can change um, the title to, for example, translation bot, okay? And um, then we can take a look at this title about our SRC and provide our own source. But in our case, I just want to comment this out. And then if we scroll down to the footer, I'm going to remove the text, the company and the company link. So right now, in my opinion, this translation board is looking much, much better. So let's run this. And I'm going to select um, Polish. All right, so we see the agent messages. This is something that we can also disable. And there we go. Here we have the results. 
So everything seems to be working. Um, if I reload this, I'll still see the history. So maybe this is something that I don't want. Maybe on reload, I would like to have a fresh window. If I press on this button, of course, I will have the fresh window, but maybe I won't see it over here and I'll try to refresh it just by reloading the page. So uh, yeah, let's do those two things additionally. So let's remove the agent messages and let's reload the bot on the uh, reload of the page. So we need to go to chat window. And over here we have show agent messages. We need to change this to false. And then we need to find something um, related to reload. Clear chart on the reload, there we go. Right now it's false, so we want to change this to true. Okay, so yeah, let's try this one more time. Um, I'm going to upload the same file and then I'm going to put in German. Okay, right now we don't see the agent messages. And there we go. And now if I reload the page, I have a clear chat. All right, so as the final step, let's add some additional logic to our workflow and let's handle different scenarios. So what I'm going to do is to simply move the end node, the agent node and the right file tool node to the right. I'm going to break the connection between this LLM node and the agent. And then I'm going to click on the plus sign and I'm going to search for condition. I'm going to drag and drop the condition between the LLM node and the agent. And I'm just going to connect the LLM node with the sequential node option of the condition. And then I'm going to name this condition as checker press on the condition button. And again, we can set some conditions over here in the table, but to have full control on what is going on, it's better to simply uh, press on the code option. You can take a look at example, how this works, but I'm going to paste the code that I've already written. And basically I'm just getting the input. So this, particular um, variable is required for me to get the information if the document exists or not. And then I'm getting the language from the state. And if the match isn't met, the condition of match isn't met, I return no file. And this is going to be a path in our workflow. Then if the language doesn't exist, we will have a different path. And if we meet both of those conditions, that means that uh, we have the language and we have the file. So what we are going to do is to simply first check if this file is in the JSX format. And if it is, we are going to pass it to our agent. And in other option, we are just going to return a format error. So if we save this, we should see all four options over here. And the translator is the uh, option for our agent. So in case of translator, we are passing um, this workflow to go this way to our agent. Now we need to handle the no file and uh, language error and the format error. So let's tackle the no file um, path. Let's add a LLM node. Okay, and over here we are going to name it as no file. Let's press on additional parameters and in the system prompt, I'm going to write shortly and kindly inform the user that he, she forgot to upload the file. And this is it. I'm not putting too much attention into prompts. So if there are any issues, you might want to optimize the prompts or optimize um, the condition a little bit. 
Um, but yeah, this is basically to show you how things work and how you can create pretty cool stuff. So right now to finish this path, we need to connect the no file with the sequential node. And yeah, now we can simply duplicate the end node and then connect it over here. So this is sometimes annoying, but if you zoom in, it's easier to connect certain components. All right, so as the next step, I'm going to um, duplicate the LLM node and duplicate again the end node. So this time we are going to tackle the language error. So I'm going to give the name of this LLM node language error, and then I'm going to connect it to the end node. All right, let's press additional parameters. And here, let's remove this. And here we are going to paste, your job is to inform the user about the language error. Say, could not detect the language. And then we just need to connect it to the language error. All right. So again, let's duplicate the end node. Let's duplicate the LLM node. And we have one more path to handle, and this is going to be the format error. Let's connect. And we need to change the prompt. Okay, and over here we got, your job is to inform the user about incorrect format of the file. So here we have a variable and then say, wrong format should be JSX only. So we need to head over to format prompt values and we need to assign to the file, the file attachment. All right. And yeah, this is it. So we can simply save this and this should work. So I'm going to simply reload the page and uh, let's do a very quick test. I'm going to select without any file English and we got a response. It looks like you forgot to upload the file. Please try again. So this seems to be working. As mentioned before, you might have to optimize a little bit the prompts, but it's a very cool solution and you can apply it in a pretty easy way. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. More on Flowwise AI with um, React Django integration coming to this channel as well as the IntelliBot channel. Uh, you can find the link in the description and probably in the pinned comment. Thank you for watching and hope to see you soon.